I go, what's up? And today we're going to ask ourselves the question, why does everybody like Dragon Ball Z? What's the big deal with Dragon Ball Z? Like, some people say it's the action. A lot of people say it's the action. It's the fights. It's the characters. It's probably some of all of that. And we're going to get to the bottom of that today. So, Dragon Ball Z. First of all, a moment of silence for uh, Kiri Toriyama, who is the author of Dragon Ball Z. He gave us this fantastic universe that, man, I know a lot of people could say that they honestly like this show. And everything in this universe, from people that became artists over this, that's my story. I, I started drawing because I used to watch the stuff on uh, Dragon Ball Z. Like, I didn't even know I could draw, but I picked up a pencil and I started just drawing Goku and the rest of them. But... Let's really start to unpack like what makes Dragon Ball Z so special for so many people. Because not every anime can be as big as this is. And there's a reason for it. Sure, it came out in the right time when people needed an anime like this. But it's more to it than that. We're not just watching the show because people are just punching and kicking and getting stronger. That is a part of it, though. We love that part. But let's really think about it, though. Like At the heart of this show, I would really tell you that this show is... Uh, um, just people trying to live in peace. It's a daily struggle, and it's people trying to just do their best, take care of their family and their friends. At the heart of this, this is a story about family and friendship, and we've seen that everywhere across the board with Dragon Ball Z. Like the first thing we see at the beginning of Dragon Ball is like little Goku. He doesn't have like his grandfather there anymore, but he meets Bulma. He establishes a relationship with her, a mentor and master Roshi. And we did see the moment when he met his grandfather, how like sad he was. And it goes even deeper than that. Like you got Bardock who sacrificed everything for his son. So this is a lot about family. Characters that you wouldn't really think that are like good or bad or evil have done some weird things out of the sake of friendship or family. Like when when you go all the way to Dragon Ball Super, you even see that too. Like the one thing I liked about what they did with the end of that arc is they they basically showed that, hey, look at this. Our whole team is basically a whole bunch of villains that decided to help us one day. Like every now and again, these villains stood up and they said, all right, you know what? I'm going to put my stuff aside and I'm going to help. You got Vegeta, who's a character we can talk about for days. I'm not going to talk about him for days, but... You know, Vegeta was a pretty selfish person. He had, like, a sad backstory, but, you know, Vegeta was out there on dirt. But somehow along the way, he had, like, some type of pseudo-rivalry slash friendship with Goku. Some He kind of liked Gohan, too. Like, he wasn't, like, he was somewhat proud of Gohan just being powerful. He was, like, a very proud person of, like, his uh, Saiyan race and everything, and that was, that was cool. Like, he'll give Krillin his props when Krillin did his thing, like, Vegeta wasn't really that that bad once you got him on, on Namek anyway, on Saiyan Saga. That Vegeta was out for blood. He taking out Cybermen, taking out Nappa. He was he was sketchy out there. But then you get him out there in like uh an Android saga. Like it's revealed that he's like with Boma now and they have a kid. I don't I don't know how that happened off screen, but like he actually seems to somewhat care about like his kid and everything. Seems like he cares about Goku a little bit more though. That's kinda odd to me though. But I don't know, we see Vegeta develop over the course of the series, and we even see him like take his whole family situation way more serious than Goku as we get on with it. And a lot of people will say Goku is like a bad dad, too. I, I don't really think he's a bad dad. Um, he's, I mean, Goku is Goku. He's just short-sighted. He doesn't really think about a lot of things like that. But like he knows how to bring the best out of Gohan better than anybody else. Like We, we want to say that Piccolo do, but really... Hey, Goku the one that got him ready to beat Cell, man. Like, Goku know how Gohan works and thinks. He just, you know, Goku's just Goku, man. He he never really tries to push Gohan if Gohan doesn't want to do it. That's the one difference between him and uh, Piccolo. Piccolo like the potential of Gohan. Goku actually really accepts who Gohan is. The only time he didn't was really just that Cell saga. But for the most part, he don't try to push him to do anything. He... Says you should be training, but you're like, well, you ain't training. It, it's kind of it's kind of a weird relationship with that, but he, you know, and, and Goten, I, I guess he's a bad father with Goten. He just basically ignores Goten. I don't I don't know what's going on. It's like everybody forgets about Goten up in this series, but I'm rambling though. But we got so many signs of like friendship and all kinds of things across the board, 
and and family and everything. You got Gohan and Videl, who's probably one of the best examples of this. And Gohan, like his journey in this series is like a testament to that too, because like Gohan, he's like he's like supposed to be the stand in for us. Like we're we're watching this story through the lens of him basically because he don't know what's going on. He don't know why these guys got key, why they fighting, why they trying to destroy the earth. And then as soon as we go to Namek, for anybody that watched Dragon Ball, you knew how Krillin and Goku were like, they were like friends. They were like the best of friends. They was rivals too. But they pretty much did a large chunk of Dragon Ball and like all of their their training and everything. They basically did it together for the most part. And then to see like Goku not be able to be there and you see like Krillin's trying to give some wisdom to Gohan and everything and making sure he's all right. That was cool. Like. Like Krillin was definitely looking out for Gohan on that on that mission and everything. It was it was great. You had to see a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Like he's like, oh man, we gonna go save Dende. Like Gohan, we shouldn't save Dende, but you went in there. I'ma back you up. So that, hey, they was they was crazy with that. But Krillin Krillin always had a lot of heart to him. Like from like going in there in fights that Krillin knows he can't win. Just like Yamcha go down, you know, Krillin was the most mad about Yamcha going down, and he took out all those Cybermen. He went and defended Gohan every step of the way on Planet Namek, made sure that Gohan was good the whole way. And then even in the Cell Saga, like he he protected Android 18, like no matter what. While everybody else was like, "Oh, that's an Android. Let's get rid of that Android," and that sure did pay dividends up in the Tournament of Power too. I tell you that. But yeah, Krillin was always a cool character. He just he just couldn't keep up though. He knew when Goku became Super Saiyan, he couldn't do it no more. But that's the thing that a lot of people do like about this story too. It's like other than like Goku, who he never gives up either, but he always makes it. The rest of the characters, they don't have a chance. They don't be having a chance in the world. But they still be trying to like overcome these obstacles. And that's real for life too, because like if you look at statistics in this world right now, it looks like we ain't got no chance, man. Like, we over here talking about men getting left behind, and it's true. We ain't got no chance. But guess what? We keep fighting despite the fact that we ain't got no chance. We're going to make a chance, man. So that's that's what I want y'all to take away from Dragon Ball. Like, I always take away from this, from, from this show because I'm seeing Goku just train and improve regardless of the fact, and he always gets it done. And I'm seeing Vegeta fail repeatedly, but still train. And he get it done, too. So you guys can do it, too. And that's what I like about Dragon Ball Z. I'm seeing some people that's going through some struggles, and they look like they can't make it at all. Like, when Boo come in there, and he destroy everybody. He the next strongest dude, and they can't do it. And they got to come up with a plan. Like, I'm seeing Piccolo stall Super Boo. Like, seeing Piccolo stall Super Boo, he needed an Academy Award for that one. Like, that was the hardest part in the like, that's one of them episodes that you really don't think about too much. You seeing Piccolo over here star Super Boo, man. Like, man, they was doomed. They was doomed. They was so doomed. It, was, it wasn't even pretty. They was like, we got to rely on Goten and Trunks, some kids. We was doomed up in the Boo Saga. But that that is crazy, though. That's what, that's what I want everybody to take away from Dragon Ball Z is I think they're telling us, like, hey, they took care of their family. They always did. They took care of their friends. They always did. They always kept trying, no matter how hard things got and how crazy things got. And they always pushed through. And I know a lot of y'all have been doing it either, too. Y'all been y'all been pushing through no matter what. It's been crazy out here in this world. And it's still going to be crazy. We got some rough times ahead. But if you can learn anything from Dragon Ball Z, I would say, hey, take care of your family and your friends. And... No matter how bad those odds are, you just keep pushing through because, man, people are doing it. And I don't mean, like, you got to be at the gym 24-7. Sometimes, like, what Goku shows us is, like, you look at the character of Vegeta. Vegeta, he's working hard every single second. And Goku, he go by the Turtle Hermit way. Work hard, study hard, play hard, rest. Rest. Don't forget that resting. Sometimes y'all be, like, having mental health and everything. Y'all be depressed. It's okay to step back and take a nap for a while, man. If you're depressed, work through that. Don't try to fight through it because if you bury that stuff down, you got trauma everywhere. So don't don't be shamed for resting when you can't do it. But just don't rest forever. Get back into the game. You can do it. But, hey, ain't no shame in that. You, you got the mental health, take the rest. But that's pretty much it with Dragon Ball Z, and that's... 
uh, why I think everybody likes Dragon Ball Z so much. It seems like it seems to affect everybody a lot, but it gives everybody hope too. And man, if they can beat Majin Buu, Jiren, the rest of these suckers, we can definitely make it in this world. Like that, that's probably way harder. So anyway, that's it. Just a short video. Just want to talk about why I think everybody likes Dragon Ball Z. I think it's nice to see these characters interact. It gets to the point where you see them in filler, like just playing baseball, and it's the coolest thing ever. But yeah, that's it. And again, uh, let's go ahead and uh, salute to Akira Toriyama. He gave us a great anime, man, full of crazy characters and everything. Just wanted to get that video out and tell y'all a little bit about what's the craziness about Dragon Ball Z. But it ain't that crazy. It's kind of like real life, just with aliens and planets blowing up and a whole lot of craziness. But anyway, that's it. Uh, let me know what your thoughts. What does this series mean to you? And I'd love to hear it. And that's it. I'll see you on the next one. Anyway, see ya.